On the bench here is a 1964 RCA Victor CTC 16 color television chassis. And it's undergoing some electronic repairs and restoration for that matter. We're going to get it working like new again. Here it is. It's a gold metal cabinet table set with the 21 FBP 22. There we go, it's the FF557B. Picked it up at an estate sale back in December. And it was a wall mount in the basement of the uh, home. So as you can see, the thing's like brand new. And it saw very few hours also. So uh, it's actually a, a really clean low hour set. Got all the parts laid out up here, convergence board and whatnot. This thing here had basically every original tube in it except the horizontal output and the 6FG7 vertical output. I tested uh, all the tubes out just to make sure it's my routine practice, even if the set works. Because sometimes you get a intermittent short, and my Sencore tester can find um, a lot of messed up tubes that uh, can easily slip by the other tube testers, because this can test for grid emission. It's my TC162. So if you like TVs, get yourself one of those, and... You'll save yourself a lot of grief because, uh, like I said, it's it's a great tester. But the problem with this thing, before I even got it, I kind of started working on it already by removing some parts. It had a burned out um, breaker, not burned out, but it was it was defective, and some tech uh, put a fuse over it, and. That fuse worked, but it was kind of a shoddy repair. It was just coming up through these holes here. But you can see the uh, this capacitor that goes over the power line blue. It's a .047 at 600. That, uh, who knows when that thing went. But it looks like some other repairs this thing saw. Just judging by the soldering here, it had a new horizontal phase detector put in at one time. You can see here's the uh, the repair tag. It was in on repair on August 23rd of 66, then again on 923 of 70. Leonard, that was the last name of the people that uh, owned the set. I was able to confirm that in my own little bit of research. But it had a bad uh, electrolytic capacitor. As you can see, I pulled it out of the chassis. It had the uh, the electrolyte kind of leaked out of the bottom of the thing. It made a little bit of a mess in the cabinet. Hardly anything, but so as a result of this tight congested area up here. I like restuffing filter capacitor cans, which is what I've done. Here's an example. This is it. As you can see, it's got all new Nichicon electrolytics. It's a four section lytic. And the whole thing um, totally rebuilt. So, the great advantage to this is going to look like nothing ever happened underneath when I'm done and it's going to have new capacitors. Here's the uh, can, here's the values. And this is really easy to do, it's just a time consuming process by taking these apart. You have to be super careful with your lead dress. So you can see it's like a could have potential shorts there, but when I'm all done, that's all going to get properly insulated. 
just run the leads right up through and solder them on the terminal. It works quite well. Otherwise, it's pretty much uh, all this TV is going to see are some capacitors and replace that. And a new fuse, which I had in my stock. New old stock, 113.950, which is a uh, 1.75 amp. Hope to uh, get this thing going maybe by next weekend. It's a Sunday evening as of me recording this, so might have a little bit of time during the week after work to finish up the rest of it. It's not playing, obviously, but yep, you guessed it, a Seabird background record. Just got a whole bunch of new ones. So, uh, those are always kind of nice to listen to when working on this stuff. You can kind of really get an idea of what it was like for the factory workers when they were listening to that. It, if the right songs are going, it, it help keeps you focused and motivated, I could, I could really see. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Just got a bunch of tools laying around and whatnot. And the next video you see, we will uh, hopefully have a demonstration of it all cleaned up and working.